today we'll be taking a look at Lagrima for the ukulele. Lagrima was composed by Terrega, which is a Spanish romantic composer of the late 18th century and the beginning of, uh, sorry, late 19th century and beginning of the 20th century. And Lagrima is a short piece that means tear. And you will hear that in the melody. So the melody starts um, with the fourth fret on the first string. So that's fourth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, second fret. That's the tier. While you play the melody, you have to play bass notes, which is the second fret, fourth fret, and then sixth fret, back to the first fret. So, which is the bass line that corresponds to the melody, which is kind of a counterpoint technique uh, straight out of the Baroque era. So when you put them together, they sound like this. So the fingers are first finger and pinky, second finger and pinky. You move that shape up to frets, and then back to the first fret and second fret. Now some people on YouTube play it like that, but I like to just shift to my first and third. You're welcome to either play it this way or this way, whichever way makes sense, okay? Um, now, when you play that, between each melody note, you have to add an ins uh, you have to add an open second string. So that's and then the second fret, and then you repeat that section twice. So here's what it sounds like. Actually, notice I'm playing it with my pinky. So actually, it might be better just to use your pinky instead of your third finger. Um, notice how when I land on the notes, I give it a slight pinky, a slight vibrato. That you make each one of them different. So in the recording, I believe the first time was louder, the second time was quieter. Just to make it interesting. Um, on the guitar, what we do is I like to play dolce the first time, which means here on the bridge. And the second time, ponte, which means next, uh, near the bridge. Whatever you do, it's a good chance to practice altering, uh, altering how you play a passage. And it's a good chance for you to practice either dynamic changes or tone changes. It's a very fancy technique that makes you sound way more advanced than whatever your level is. Once you finish that, starts the hard move of that first major section, which is pinky on the 12th fret, and the second finger on the 11th fret, and the first finger on the 9th fret. And then I'm playing third finger on the 11th fret with an open second string. Back to that ninth fret. And then first finger and pinky, second finger. And then while holding my second finger in, I try to stretch my pinky as much as I can. And I hit harmonics. That's the melody. So that's my goal, is to get that melody to shine. And then, while the harmonics is ringing, or are ringing while the harmonics, while you can hear it, you have to hit that fourth fret. It's very important that you overlap their sound, so it doesn't sound like... Make sure there's no pause in the sound between them. And that's why I chose the harmonic, because it rings a little bit longer. Originally, I had it here. And um, depending on your ukulele's resonance, there's a good chance the B, sorry, the, the seventh fret is not gonna ring over. So that's why I chose the harmonics. Yeah, so let's play that one more time. Now you play third finger, sixth fret, second finger, fifth fret, pinky on the, or fourth finger on the seventh fret. Now here, I like to stretch my third finger, it's a little bit difficult, but not really on the ukulele. On the guitar this would be very hard, but on the ukulele. Um, while holding the 7th fret, I stretch my third finger, 
to get the fifth fret. So it's very important that you do this while you're hearing the seventh fret. Again, don't wait for it to pause. You have to do it quickly. And while you're here, now you transition this. Now that your second finger is here, you shift it up down one fret. Third finger is free, so that's you stretching it for the fourth fret. Um, if you don't know how to do that, I, I, I recommend you just, you just let it go. Yeah. Then comes the minor section, which is the B section. So in case you're wondering what that means, Lagrima is divided into three sections. The first one we call it A, the second one we call it B, and the third one is A again. The first time you play A, you repeat it. The first time you play B, you also repeat it. But the last time you play A, you don't repeat it. So it's really A, A, B, B, A. This is a standard form for composition in the um, in almost all of classical music for short pieces. So A is in a major key, B is in a minor key, the relative minor, and then A is back in the major key. So you really you have happy, sad, happy. And oftentimes, if the first section is sad, you would have sad, happy, sad, or minor, major, minor. So it's either major, minor, major, or minor, major, minor. In this case, we're doing major, minor, major, okay? So the minor part, what you're going to do is you're gonna play second finger on the second fret and pinky or fourth finger on the third fret. Slide down your fourth, fret to, uh, fourth finger to the eighth fret. Now you're gonna play this chord with a bar and use your fourth finger so that your third finger can play the third fret so that your second finger is free to... This way there's no pauses between any of the transitions. Now while, you heard, while you're holding that bass note, you have to play... Obviously you have to let go of the bass note when you get here, so it's... That's second and fourth finger. Second finger open. Fourth finger, second finger. Back to open. Pinky or fourth finger on the 12th fret. Stretch. So here, fourth finger, first finger. First, uh, fourth finger, first finger. Fourth finger. So look at when I play the fifth fret. My third finger is already ready to go. Now, first finger, fourth finger, third, second, fourth, third, second. And the reason is you want to hold that bass note. You can still hear the bass note. finger, second and third, then you let go of your fourth finger and second finger, oh sorry, uh, how does it go again, oh, I forgot that, right so, so it's fourth finger on the second fret, and then you play open second finger, notice how this is a pivot point, So the whole minor part is play the major section one more time. 
Um, it's a lot of fun, this piece. I would say, even if you don't like it, learn it. There are so many advantages and benefits to learning this piece, uh, especially with the fingerings that you have. It's super short. If you can play it nicely, um, it could make a lot of people, you know, melt. Um, so it's definitely worth a shot. Lagrima by Terega. See you soon.